Hello everybody and welcome to this first impressions video of Heat. I tried to do a first impressions video of this game back when it first came out, but unfortunately I had quite a bit of trouble getting it to run on my PC, but I've been able to get it to run this time, so we're going to take a look at it. First I wanted to show you the character creation. It's a little bit scary at first, but it's not so bad once you actually get into the game. So you can choose all kinds of things like race, hair color, eyes, shape of your face, and then you can even edit your uh, gang flag. I decided of course to name my character Kara Jones and my group name is the Joneses. So here you can see me customizing the flag. I added a horse, of course, with wings, which you can actually flip around and completely customize, which I think is really cool in survival games. The more customizable things we have, the better. I am playing on an official PvE server here because I don't believe there's a single player mode and I wasn't sure how to open the server file to run it myself. So I'm on an official server, so just keep that in mind as we play. So here are my first few minutes. Basically, you spawn just like any other survival game somewhere on the map, uh, I think by the train tracks, and then you try and pick a spot that you want to head to. So in this case, I decided I wanted to head over towards the desert or plains area to try and build my home. And as you can see, it's a beautiful world. I think they've done a really good job creating the map. I do like the graphics, although I was a little bit confused at the swinging thing over the back of my head. I know it's supposed to be like a, a kit, like a pioneer kit kind of thing, but it was also a little bit weird that you can hit things with it and gather resources. I found that odd, but I think the game is more of a goofy game, so it goes along with the goofy kind of theme. Then I came across this huge mega structure, um, which it's a public official PvE server, so I kind of expected to see some odd things, but I didn't quite expect to see something walled in uh, across a path or a road in the game, so I was a little disappointed at that. But what I was impressed with was the skill tree. There are so many things you can learn and use. There's furniture, there's fencing, there's saddles, there's farming stuff. I mean, the depth to the skill tree is incredible. I mean, there's even diapers you can make for your baby. So after I leveled up a little bit, I found some train tracks and I decided that I was going to hunt near the train tracks so that I kind of knew where I was. Now to hunt in this game, you have to eat hunter's chew so that you're able to more easily see the animals. For whatever reason, I was not able to find any wild animals and it put me off a little bit. But after I ate the hunter's chew, I was able to find a goat. And uh, if any of you have been here long enough, you know that I don't have a very good relationship with goats in games. In Outlaws of the Old West, I get killed by them all the time. And of course, here was nothing different. I came in with a club and quickly realized how hard it is to target these things, which is probably my biggest qualm with the combat, is that I don't really find it that responsive. So in retrospect, I should have made a bow and arrow and tried to kill the goat, but instead... The goat succeeded and I ended up respawning back on the train tracks again. So different game, same trend of dying to goats. At this point, I was not hooked on the game. I was a little frustrated. I was enjoying the environment, but I don't know. I just felt like it was like any other survival game. So I think this would be a good time to mention that the community is in a little bit of an uproar over the state of the updates that the game has been getting. Um, the community is afraid that perhaps it's been abandoned and that the updates have somewhat stopped. But there was recently an animal update. So I would like to get to the point where I can test out the animal update. That's actually the reason I'm doing the review is that I saw that the developers were active again. So anyway, here I am placing my claim flag. I finally found a nice area um, between two rivers on the border of the plains and the desert that I thought I'd settle. So as you can see, it pops up there as the Joneses. So I was really happy to finally have a home. So next I put down a shipping container, which is really interesting, unique feature to this game um, where I was able to sell goods. And then as a result, I will be able to keep my claim up and also be able to buy things. So after I had all that set up, I started building, and this is when I started getting really hooked on the game. At first, I was a little frustrated with the building system, but it's just like any other survival game where you go into the wheel, choose what you want to build, and place it down. I found out a way to make a porch with a ledge, and I uh, even figured out how to upgrade structures. So here I have some nice stairs that I built for myself, which I think look pretty cool. And then eventually I will upgrade all of these sticks to logs. 
As you can see, I have uh, some log structures now instead of just those sticks, and I think I can continue upgrading that into stone if I wanted to, but I kind of like the look of a log cabin. So I decided that maybe I'm kind of starting to enjoy the game a little bit. Um, the only problem was that I was missing food. I only had a few cherries, so I had to quickly figure out a way to get some food. So I decided to research a hoe and start making garden plots which I really liked that you can do this directly into the terrain and that it changes the terrain. So I made a small garden right on the side of my house and I noticed that things started to actually look like a little homestead as if a pioneer were actually moving in there. I love being able to spread the seeds on the plot. I thought that was a really neat feature. And so slowly my experience in heat started to take shape and I started to enjoy it. Then I noticed I could actually buy food, animals, and tools in the shipping catalog, and I was excited because I could actually uh, use all of the materials that I'd been grinding for, sell them, and then buy things to help me uh, enjoy the game a little bit more instead of having to grind so much. So I got a little confident. Uh, I got a bow and I got arrows, and I decided I was going to go hunting again and see what the combat is really like when you attempt to do it the right way. So I found a beaver. And uh, I tried shooting it with an arrow, which at first was weird because it hones the arrow in if you hold, but if you release the button, it doesn't it doesn't hone in anymore. And eventually, I was able to hit the beaver. Um, it wasn't that bad. It's kiting with the bow and arrow, of course, which is usually how it always is. But I was pretty proud that I was able to take a beaver down, and now I will have some fresh meat for myself. And of course, you chop up the beaver with your hatchet, and it kind of makes some gross noises, so I'm not going to make you listen to a bunch of those, but I believe you can turn those off in the menu. So next, I decided I wanted some duck, so I hunted a duck really quickly, which was much easier than the beaver. And finally, I upgraded to a buffalo, which I decided I needed to kite, so shoot it with a bow a few times, run, shoot it, repeat. And eventually I was able to get the mammoth amount of health down in the buffalo, and we successfully hunted it. So I feel like now that I've gotten the hang of the combat, it's really not that bad. I'm curious to see what shooting with an actual gun would be like compared to shooting with a bow and arrow. But anyway, I took this a step further and I decided to go after some NPCs, which actually scared the heck out of me because there was one behind the rock to the left and you can see my camera shaking as my mouse is moving all over the place as I try to run away. But I noticed my health wasn't going down that much from gunshots, so I was kind of curious if maybe I'd be able to take them on with an arrow, a uh, bow and arrow. And uh, sure enough, I was able to dodge around and end up taking this guy. I think he has a shotgun, maybe? I was able to take him down. So there are two of them here. And it wasn't like overwhelming, but it was a little scary. You can see my blood trail. Kind of a graphic game. Um, but it wasn't a bad experience, being honest. And I can only imagine how easy it would be with a gun. So I'm wondering if maybe things get a little bit too easy once you get all your gear and level up, you know, as it is in most games. So you do get loot from NPCs, which I was pretty happy about. And then something interesting happened. I was able to mourn this NPC. I'm not sure what that does, but uh, <laughs> I just kept finding all of these little things in the game that kind of made me get attached a little bit more and more to it. So the last thing I want to talk about is that there are NPC areas in the game. So this is one that's close to me. I'll let you explore the others for yourself. These are the Native American areas, I suppose. And once I got there, I found out that there was a huge war tent and that I could actually sit down in the chief seat and become the chief of the village. And this gave me all kinds of cool perks. I got a war horse all for myself. Um, I got some warriors to add to my party that I can command to do kind of whatever I need them to do. And I guess something else I can mention while we're talking about NPCs is that you can have children in this game. You can have a family and they can grow up and they can defend you. I'm not gonna show the baby making mechanics in the video, but uh, from what I've seen, they look pretty funny. So anyway, here's my horse that I got for becoming the chief of the village. And here are my NPCs that I will be able to take with me. I really didn't think I was going to end up liking heat 
but I have to say, I really do. The only thing that's stopping me from playing is that I don't want to play on officials, and most of the privately hosted servers are not active or littered with tons of unused structures. And I was thinking of hosting my own server, but I saw the minimum slots available for most sites are 32, and that's just way too many and way too high of a price for me to pay. So for now, I think I'm going to wait and see how this game develops and possibly host a server for it in the future if there's any interest. I'm not that bothered by the lack of updates. Um, I am a little concerned that this is the same company that did Reign of Kings and that that game is no longer a thing and I don't want to be investing in a game that might possibly become vaporware one day. But I'm going to stay slightly optimistic as long as the developers keep pushing out updates because I already think there's a lot of content in this compared to other early access survival games that I'm playing. Uh, quick note, that little backwards flippy thing on the horse, can't stand it, needs to change. But um, I mean, just look how goofy that is. But anyway, I'm just going to keep a close eye on this one. I'm really curious to know what you all think about Heat. Have you been following it for a long time? And have you heard about all of the concerns about the state of the development of the game? I'm curious to hear more about that. Although, as I said, not too worried about it now, as we did just get an animal update. I hope this first impressions video helped you if you're thinking about buying or playing Heat. So, as always, guys, my socials are all down in the links below. Please enjoy your games. I hope you are. And as always, I will see you in the next one.